Hello and welcome to Drunk on Tea. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this Goblin Town Goblin. To start I primed in white spray and the first step is I'm coming in with Rakaf Flesh and for this I'm going to paint all of the skin on the model. You don't need to be neat at this stage, just make sure you catch all of the skin from the Goblin with a couple of thin coats of Rakaf Flesh. Because there's a lot of skin on this model, that's why we're painting it first. Make sure you catch all of the flesh with a couple of thin coats of Rakar flesh. After a couple of coats, you should have a nice solid base cover of lacquer flesh all over the skin. So next, I'm going to come in with some Karaberg Crimson. I'm doing a spot change with this. So I'm putting a little bit of Karaberg Crimson into all of the recesses that are on the model. So work your way around the model. I'm putting a thin line of Cowberg Crimson into all of the recesses and in detail on the model. This will help give some definition and shade to all of that skin. So that's it, our cowboy crimson has been applied. It looks a bit messy at this stage, but don't worry, we will get it looking up. So now I'm coming in with Pallid Witch Flesh, and I'm having this nice and thin, and I'm putting this on all of the most raised details. So I'm leaving some of that Rakar Flesh showing, but on anything that's raised and pronounced, I'm putting a thin layer of Pallid Witch Flesh. So it's things like here on the details around the face, and these parts here around his arms and on top of all of these spots and warts and things. Just work your way around and any of the raised areas, thin layer, pallid witch flesh. It is worth taking your time with this step because there is a lot of detail and the skin is the main part of the model and will be a real focal point. So by taking your time on this step, it really will help make the model look really good once everything's finished. Once the Pallid Witch Flesh has dried, you can see we started to add some highlights and tone to that skin. So next I'm coming in with Deep Kin Flesh, and for this I'm going to put a little spot on all of the most prominent raised details. So it's things like here, like his eyebrows, any folds on his forehead, his nose, around his mouth, and anything that's a sharper edge. You're going to put a thin line, deep kin flesh to act like an edge highlight on all of these details. 
So once again, take your time, work your way around the model and picking out any of the most pronounced details with a thin line of deep kin flesh. Okay, so here on the fingers, I'm catching the knuckles and any joints tips of the fingers to help make those stand out. that deep kin flesh applied you can see we've added some tone and definition to the skin so now there's just one more step to do on the flesh as so i come in here with some seraphin sepia and i'm putting this sort of on the warts and the spots to make areas look a little bit sore you can just work your way around pick some different spots put a little bit of seraphin sepia just to make it look like it's sore and painful just to add some more tone and interest to different parts of the skin just pick random spots and all of the bits that have sort of warts and add a little bit of seraphim sepia and that's the skin finished you can see it looks quite sore and painful and now i'm just going to paint the eyes so i'm coming with abad and black I'm putting a little bit of this into the eye socket. And I get some white scar. And for this, I'm putting a little line in the middle of that black line I just applied. At this stage, I'm also going to pick out his teeth. Then finally, I'm coming back in with black and I'm putting a vertical line in the middle of that white we just applied that will act like a pupil. And that's the skin finished. So now we're going to start moving on to his clothing and other items. To start with, I'm using Mournfang Brown and applying this to this cloth. So it should be nice and neat. You don't get this on any of the skin we've already painted. But catch this loincloth with a couple of coats of Mournfang Brown. It will be quite thin, especially off of a white base coat. He's also got these sort of leather straps around his wrists, so I'm also painting those with more fine brown as well. Just cover all of this with a couple of coats of more fine brown. And then she built up a nice solid base cover on that. The next thing I'm going to paint is his bag. So I'm coming in with some Rhinox hide. I'm going to paint this little satchel he's got by his side and the strap going over his chest that holds it on. It would be nice and neat. With a couple of coats of Rhinox hide, should build up a nice solid base cover all over this bag. After a couple of coats, the bag's got a nice solid cover on it. So next, I'm going to paint his hair. For this, I'm going to come in with Mechanica Standard Grey. And just pick out the hair that's on the top of his head. So try not to get this over any of the skin. Just 
apply a nice coat of Mechanica Standard Grey all over his hair. So the next step, I'm going to paint the wood on his weapon. So he's coming with dryad bark, picking out his axe. And again, this will probably take a couple of coats to get a solid cover. But just wait for the first one to dry and then come in with a second coat of dryad bark. And with the wood painted, the next step is going to paint the little bit of strapping that's holding the blade to the axe. So for this I'm using Steel Legion Drab and just picking out this little bit of strapping that's on the edge of the axe. that completed there's just one more base cover left to apply and that's the metal so for this I'm going to use lead belcher and just pick out the head of his axe and that's all of the base coats applied to this problem so I'm going to shade everything that we've just painted with a shade of known oil. So that's the hair, all of the cloth and fabric, strapping, wood and the metal. Just give all of this a shade of known oil. And once those shades have dried, all that's left to do is just to highlight this back up. So to start with, I'm using Mournfang Brown, painting this onto his loincloth again. On the raised areas where the shade hasn't settled, just put a thin coat of Mournfang Brown to bring it back up to its original colour. And then I come in with some scrag brown and I just put an edge highlight around the most prominent parts of that fabric. So it's the edge here and any prominent parts on the loincloth just put a thin line of scrag brown. And that's that fabric highlighted. So next I'm going to highlight up his bag. So for this, I'm coming in with Vinox Hide again, placing this on all the raised flat areas where the shape hasn't settled. Just catch it with a thin coat of Vinox Hide. With that thin coat applied, it's just an edge highlight left to apply to that. And so for that, I'll be using Gorefall Brown. Just catching any of the most raised and prominent parts. So it's these faulty or straps and the edge of the flap on the bag and any folds or prominent detail. Just catch them with an edge highlight of Gorefall Brown.
And with that bag highlighted, there really isn't many steps left to do. So next I'm going to do his hair, coming in with Dawnstone for this, and just picking out all of the strands with a thin layer of Dawnstone, just to highlight the hairs on his head. That's the hair highlighted. The next step I'm going to highlight is his axe. So I'm using Bane Blade Brown on the wood. And I'm just putting some little spots running along the shaft of the axe just to act like a wood grain. Just some tiny little specks all over just to highlight that wood. So with the wood highlighted, the next step is the strapping on the end. I'm using Baylor Brown. I'm just going to catch any of the straps that I can. It's just a few vertical lines of Baylor Brown running down that strapping just to give it a highlight. And with that done, there's only one thing left to highlight now, and that is the metal. So for this, I'm using Stormpost Silver. I'm just going to catch the very edge of this axe head with a thin edge highlight, Stormpost Silver. So that is a Goblin Town Goblin painted. A nice, quick, easy paint job to allow you to get a lot of these guys on the table nice and quickly so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching and enjoy painting